What's up guys, this is Casey Underhill, and I wanted to bring you a Blender tutorial on how to make a metal bucket. Uh, it's getting to be summertime outside, things are starting to get warm, and I figure this looks like a nice uh, pail that you might put some ice in and put some drinks in or something to take to the beach. Uh, you, I think you usually see this in a lot of like adverts and stuff for um, beach side resorts. Uh, they do just that, they put ice in it and a couple of bottles of beer. Um, they have a couple of chairs, a uh, big umbrella, that sort of thing. Anyways, you can see here uh, the finished result that we're looking for. It's a fairly basic tutorial, so you can follow along pretty easily. Uh, let me go ahead and load up a new file. <coughs> All right, first thing we want to do, delete that cube, hit X. Let me turn on my screencast keys for you guys. We're also going to delete that light, so hit X. And we want to shift A, add a circle. 32 vertices is about right for this bucket. So I want to get rid of these stupid arrows. They get in my way. So I'm just going to click right here. And I want to go and hit numpad 5 so I can get my orthographic view. And numpad 1 will bring you to your front view. So let me go ahead and drag this up about here. I'm going to tab to go into edit mode and I think everything's good so I'm gonna hit E to extrude and then I'm going to hit Z to restrain it to the Z axis just gonna pull that down right to the middle point here and then I want to hit S to scale and just bring it in uh, about there so that is the basis for our bucket now I want to hit the F key to make a face at the bottom and we're getting pretty close here. So let me see, what do I want to do next? Uh, let me hit the edge, uh, edge select button, and just select an edge. I think it's easiest if you keep the edge that you select on one of these axes, but uh, I just want to only delete the edge. Nope, that was too much. Or was it? Maybe not. Actually, let me delete a face instead. Select the face, delete the face, there we go. Okay, so I want to select these vertices here. And I'm going to hit 7 to go to my top view. And I just want to hit G to grab it. And I'm just going to pull this out just a little bit. And then do the same for this one. I don't want to do this all the way around. I just want it brought a little closer this way. There we go. Now right here, I want to overlap, right like that. I just want this little crease, this little edge right here, without messing up my bucket too much. Uh, if you ever look at pictures of realistic metal buckets, it's basically just tin that they wrapped around and then punched together. So there's a, an overlay where they punched it. And that's kind of the effect that we're going for here. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and select the outer ring let's hold alt and click that ring and what we're gonna do is we're going to extrude it and right click so that it looks like it's just overlaying the top of it but we're gonna scale it and grab it on the Z Just pull it down a little bit and that'll make the lip of the bucket and now at the bottom they do the same thing with the bottom of a bucket where it's basically just a piece of tin that they pull out around the edges and they punch around the edges so there's like a, a little overhang uh, so we're going to do the same thing select that bottom going to extrude scale it out and then I want to grab that on the Z and let me scale that back in just a bit right about there now there are two faces here, so what I want to do is go to face select and just delete that face. <coughs> okay, there wasn't two faces there. Never mind. Let's select that inner, that bottom face, because we don't want the face to be on this side. We want it to be on the bottom side. That's where it was before when we extruded it. So let's select this bottom row of vertices, and we're just going to hit F to make a face. And I think our bucket is pretty much set up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab out, actually wait, tab back in, 
select everything with A and go mesh normals recalculate that did not do it maybe the inside uh, neither of them are looking great we'll make this do we'll make this do it should be okay the way you the way you had it um, <clears throat> we want to add a couple of modifiers to this but first let's smooth shade it okay so you can see it's got some weird lighting effects and things just aren't really turning out the way we want it to so let's go over to the modifier tab add modifier and we're going to go edge split and that makes it look a lot lot cleaner so now that we have the edge split I'm going to add another one and it's going to be the solidify and that is way too thick we gotta decrease that quite a bit here let's go down hmm point three maybe point three mm -hmm. okay it looks like this ring on the bottom is not showing enough so let's go ahead and select that ring and just scale it out grab that on the Z a little bit back on the Z a little bit scale it back in it's all just about just finding a place that looks about right uh, maybe just a tad bit there we go and it looks like we may have lost a little bit hold on let me put my edge split down here maybe that'll help it yeah that helps it a little bit <coughs> okay so I kind of want to pull this edge out just a little bit more. Make that a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to create a loop cut. We're going to pop it up right about, eh, right about here is fine. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my solidify modifier for now and my edge split just so I can see things a little better. I want to make three cuts. They want to be fairly close together. Right there. And I want to do this again just a little bit further down. So here's one. There's two. And there's three. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt to select that one. Alt Shift will add this one. Nope, not that one. Alt shift there we go <clears throat> and I just want to scale this out a little bit right there okay maybe now that I have my solidify it will do my normals correctly okay we're not so worried about the inside of the bucket as we are the outside so since we have the outside looking pretty good let's go ahead and turn on our modifiers again to make sure everything's looking all right all right, that is not bad. That is not bad. So I guess the next thing we need to do is add the handle. So for the handle, I want to go back to my front view. And I actually want to go into edit mode. I'm just going to select this vertice and that vertice. And I'm going to go mesh, snap, cursor to selected. Make sure that went in the right spot, and it did. So let's shift A to add a plane. Rotate that on the X by 90 degrees. And let's scale it down. Let's pull it up on the Z a little bit. Maybe about, mm, maybe about right there. Okay, let's tab into edit mode. We're gonna go ahead and pull these sets of vertices down here and extrude them on the x-axis about here. Extrude on the x. Now you can see it's not really hugging the bucket like we need it to, so we're just gonna grab those vertices, pull them in on the y, right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these two vertices and extrude on the z-axis and we just want to scale these ones in a little bit same with these ones and then maybe scale these ones out a tad 
you can make these handles however you really want whatever kind of design you want there's no uh, set rules on these these in in bring it in okay so <clears throat> I just want to, I think I'm going to grab the tip of this, and I want to go to Proportional Editing tab, click Enable. Too much, too much. Use your scroll wheel to make your circle big, bigger or smaller. Just going to kind of bend it inwards a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now that we have that, go ahead and smooth shade it. And I want to now duplicate it. So Shift D. I'm going to hit Y and just pull it out here. I'm going to go to Object, Mirror, and I want it on the, is it the Y axis? Yeah. So Global Y. Go ahead and left click to make sure that you select it. And then I'll go ahead and grab it on the Y axis. Pull it to this side of the bucket. So now we have both of our handles for the bucket. Now you can see this one's sort of pulling through. We might have to mess with that a little bit, but for right now I just want to select both of these handle objects and Control J to join them together. It'll make it easier to add modifiers to. And let's go ahead and add a solidify modifier. And let's see, how big do I want these? Actually that's not bad. I do see already Oops, this handle needs to come closer to the bucket. You can see it's floating out there a little bit. Oops, turn my proportional editing back off. Grab it on the Y. Let's just pull it into the bucket. And maybe while I'm at it, what I'll do is I'll rotate it. Something like that. And then grab that back on the Y and pull it out a little bit. Okay, pull that out just a little bit more, rotate it, grab it and rotate it. Basically what we're trying to do is make it so it does not intersect with the bucket. Okay, so it's not touching the bucket completely, but it's really close and it's not cutting through like this side is, so I think that side's going to be okay for now. Let's go ahead and do the same for this side. Oops. Uh, to get to wireframe mode, all I'm doing is hitting my Z, Z key, so that you can select vertices through each other. It makes it easier to select things. Uh, let me see here. Let's rotate that out. Grab it on the Y. Rotate. Grab on the Y. Uh, that is really close. Let me grab it back in just a tad. Ah, we're intersecting again. Pull that out just a bit. Okay, so now that I've done that, I think I actually need to pull these a little bit closer. So I'm just going to pull them on the Y so that it looks like it's connecting with the bucket a little bit more. Right about there is okay. And maybe do the same for this side, although I think this side turned out pretty good. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Go ahead and grab that on the Y, right about there. Okay, so <clears throat> we have our solidify is okay. I may need to recalculate these normals like we did with the bucket. <clears throat> and that really didn't do much. So probably what we're looking for is an edge split again. So add the edge split modifier. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Now we can see that there's a little bit of protrusion going through here. <coughs> Sorry guys, my voice is giving out on me. Um, I'm going to select this one again. And we're just going to pull that out just a, just a bit. Actually, let me rotate it a bit. Pull it out right about there. Okay, now we're, now we're looking good. Now we're there. <coughs> Okay, so now that I have all that, I want to go in here and figure out where the hole for the handle is going to be. So I'm thinking right about in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a loop cut right there. 
and make two loop cuts and hit scale on the x-axis and that'll just pull those two lines in so now we have our square I understand that that's not a circle that's perfectly fine we're gonna go to face select select that little spot and just delete it so now we have our hole and we want to do the same for this side it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not you don't have to align it exactly you're just trying to make it look uh, fairly similar so let's go ahead and loop cut <coughs> Uh, where do I want to loop cut it? What was it about right here? Is that too low? I think that's too low. Let me loop cut it up here instead. Right about there. Do two loop cuts and scale that on the... Nope, not the Y. Scale that on the X axis. Pull them in close. Right there. Face select. Grab that square. And delete it. And you can see this one's a little bit longer than this side. That is all right. <clears throat> if we really want to, we can take the uh, edges for that. Let's go to Edge Select. We can just scale those out on the x-axis. So that it's a little bit closer. All right, good enough, good enough. So the next thing we want to do is actually add the handle. Now this part... I won't say that it's tricky, but I really don't like working with curves that much. And you kind of have to for this. I'm just going to select these two vertices. No, not that one. This one here, these two vertices, and go Mesh, Snap, Cursor to Selected. I'll tab out, Shift A, Curve, and let's go with Bezier Curve. And we want to rotate that on the Z by 90 degrees. And I'll go ahead and tab into that. And I want to grab the middle part of the handle. I'm just going to grab that in right. Yeah, that's about good. And for this side, I want to do about the same. About here. And then just want to straighten these handles out. This one's way up there for some reason. The uh, closer these handles are to each other, to the middle point I should say, the uh, less or more of a curve that you get, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, that looks about the right size. So, uh, oh, actually, hold up. These need to be turned, actually, inwards. Not that way. Hold on, let me go to my top view. Needs to pull through like this. This needs to be on the other side. And we'll just pull that one in like that. Now I want to select the middle point of that handle. And if I can find the middle point, select that one. I'm going to come over here and click subdivide. It's going to give me an extra handle. I just want to pull that out. Pull these handles out a little bit, make it a little rounder. Right about there. Now we're looking good. So select the middle point of that handle. And grab it on the Z. I'm just going to pull it down until it almost intersects with that bucket. Up just a bit. So right about there looks right. Okay, how do I have this going through? Coming through that way. Going through that way. I've got these backwards, don't I? Curves going through the hole and out. Yeah, I have these backwards. So let me grab that like this. And then turn that one back around. Something like that. Actually, I actually want to make this handle a little bit longer. Which means I can make this handle a little longer. 
Okay, that looks about right. So now let's go ahead and tab out. You can see a little bit better where your curve is at. You can see that we, uh, <clears throat> we've intersected our bucket a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab that middle one, pull that up on the Z until we're out of the bucket. There we go. So now what we want to do is we want to come over here to the Curve tab. And first of all, go to Texture Space and go Use UV. It's going to be important when we materialize this thing later. Underneath the Fill, we want to select the box and click Full. And then we want to select the bevel. And we just want to increase it until you have something that looks about the roundness of a handle. Uh, that might be a little bit much. 0.3 or 0 0.003 looks to be about right. Okay, so um, go ahead and make sure that that's smooth shaded and it should be already. I uh, don't think an edge split is going to help us here. No. wonder if a subsurf would help. Alright, subsurf kind of helps. If you want to add a subdivision surface modifier, uh, go ahead probably only need one subdivision but uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to add that little wooden piece to the handle so if I go ahead and go in here I just want to select this middle one and go curve snap cursor to selected tab back out and add this time we're going to add a ch -ch 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 cylinder Okay, so let's rotate that on the Y by 90. Nope, not Y, not Y. <coughs> rotate on the X by 90. Let's go ahead and scale that way down. Scale her down. Okay, now we're going to scale that on the Y to go across the handle. Right about here. Just make sure that the uh, handle itself the actual metal part of the handle is going through it. Uh, in my case, it looks like I need to move my handle back just a bit. Right about there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to add some loop cuts. Let's go ahead. Should I do two of them, four of them? Let's do four. And I'm going to alt. Oops. Zoom in a little bit. Alt-click on both of these, Alt-Shift-click for that one. And I want to scale that one on the Y, bring it a little closer together. And we'll do the same for this side. Oops, I hit the space bar. Okay, Alt-Shift, scale that on the Y. And I want to Alt-Shift for this one and this one. Nope, I want the faces. So let's control shift. Oh, control shift. Deselect those faces. Okay. No, 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 no. What am I doing? There we go. Okay. So now all I want to do is I'm just gonna. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's scale those in a little bit. Is it going to matter if I scale this one? Let's see. A little bit. There we go. We're just kind of making a little bit of an interesting handle for it. Uh, make sure that you smooth shade it. And again, we're going to add an edge split modifier. Alright, very nice, very nice. So it looks like we're ready to get into the materials. And the materials are actually fairly easy for the bucket. What we want to do, go into our edge select, and let's uh, unclick our modifiers here so we can see a little better. Um, where do we want our seam? Actually, I might be able to get away with doing a cylinder projection. Let me see. Um, tab out. Make sure that you're back here. If you want to turn modifiers back, you can do that. Um, first thing you want to do is uh, do Control A and apply the rotation and the scale. 
Then we're going to tab in, select everything, click U, and we're just going to do cylinder projection. I want to see how that turned out. Yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm in Blender Render, I want to be in Cycles. We're going to add a new material. Let's just call this Metal. And click here to get to your nodes. And the first thing we want to do is add a texture, image texture. And let me go to my textures. Okay, I'm using a texture from cgtextures.com. And it is, I think page 5 you'll find this one. It's just a galvanized steel or galvanized metal. If you search for metal and then go to page 5, it should be in here. Uh, you want your you want your actual metal or you want your UV rays to actually be kind of small. I think that turns out about right, but let me scale it down and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and connect that up. And over here in the window, I just want to go to for now I want to go to rendered view. Yeah, actually that's not bad. We're looking about right on that. So, I want to add another texture, image texture, to the top of that one. And what I've done is I've created a normal map for it, or a uh, specularity map for it, I mean. If you don't have a specularity map, make sure that you download a program called Crazy Bump. And you'll be able to create specularity maps, normal maps, diffuse, uh, occlusion maps, anything that you want. It's basically a couple clicks away. But uh, let's go ahead and go to Converter, Color Ramp, add that in there. Connect the color of the image texture to the color ramp. And I want to add a shader, mix shader, and add a shader, glossy shader. I think it was about a 0.5 for the, or not 0.5, 0 0.05, oops, 0 0.05, come on, 0.05, there we go, 0 0.05 for the roughness of the glossy shader, I'm going to connect that up, and then we'll connect this up, okay, you can see that that is crazy looking, so we want to click on the white side of this uh, color ramp, and we're just going to drag that down, Keep dragging it down. Keep dragging it down. Right about there is probably right. Now hopefully we get enough glossy uh, glossiness from that. Um, I guess while I'm here I should probably go to my world tab. I'm going to add in an HDR image for my lighting. This is optional. If you want to use a regular, regular image or a lamp or something you can do so. I just like doing this because it's quick. <clears throat> go ahead and go to strength of three. And I want that background to be transparent. Alright, that is actually looking pretty good. Let's uh let me see if I can move this up a little bit without ruining it. A little bit more. Okay, all right, that looks about right. So uh, one last thing that I want to do here is I want to add a bit of a grunge to it. So I'm going to add another mix shader. This is just going to be a real quick grunge. I know from experience that I want this to be about a 0.3 on the mix shader. I want to add a texture image texture. I'm going to open a grunge file. Again, you can find a ton of grunge files at cgtextures.com. I'm going to go with... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Leaking. And I want to add a shader diffuse. <clears throat> Put the image texture into the diffuse and the diffuse into the mix shader. Now, one last thing that we're going to have to do is go to the vertex groups of the bucket and click the plus sign to add a new one. I want to rename these both. This is going to be metal. This one is going to be renamed to 
grunge. And this one will be exactly the same UV layout as the other one. You can see it looks the same. What I want to do is I want to open my, maybe, if my computer doesn't freeze up on me. Give it a second. <clears throat> Probably shouldn't have put this on uh, rendered view. Come on. Okay, hold on. Let me go to do solid view for now. Oops. Okay. And let me click on my decals leaking mossy. And I want to move this up towards the top. I'm going to scale this out a bit and scale it on the Y. Scale it on the Y. Let's go about there. That should be good and click back on the metal so now what we want to do is we want to add in another node it's going to be an input attribute node and in the name field we want it to be named exactly the same as our UV map over here so metal and I want to connect the vector of that up to my specularity map and my original metal image and then I'm just going to shift D on the attribute node, I'll rename that to Grunge, which is the name of my second UV map, and connect the vector of that up to my Grunge image. And now if I go to my materials, tab out, you can see it's just barely showing up, which is about where we want it to be. So I think our metal material is done. So let's go ahead and click on the um, the little metal handles over here, the handle holders, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and go to edit mode, and I'm going to need to unwrap these. I think these ones I can project from view, so it shouldn't be too bad. And again, you're going to want to add another UV map. Rename this one to Metal. Rename this one to Grunge. And for the Grunge, I want to scale it out just a bit. Move it up. And for the material, I'm going to just drag it back to the metal material that we've already created. And that should look pretty decent. And it does. So now let's go ahead and click on our wire for our handle. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to click metal. And there's not much that you can do with this one, actually. You don't have to unwrap this. The grunge texture is not really going to do anything, I don't believe. Um, actually, for this one, I do want to uh, select three, the little number next to the material up here. And what I want to do is I want to select those attribute nodes and just delete them. Since we don't actually have a uh, UV map for these, it's just going to uh, cancel those out. So we don't want those. Um, next here is the wood handle. Uh, I have a material that I'm going to use that I will explain to you. I'm going to go ahead and append it now. should be this material. So for the handle, I want to use... It looks like it came up as material 1. Okay, so all I did was I found a wood texture on CG Textures, and the wooden texture, let me find it for you so you can see, it is just plywood. You don't want boards running through it, or you don't want like a wood floor, you just want something wooden. Um, actually, I do need to unwrap this. Let me go ahead and select that. Let's try a cylinder projection. Okay, let me scale that in on the X, because that's really, 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 really long. Or do I want long? Maybe I want long. What's that look like? Ugh. That's not great. Uh, maybe I need to rotate it. Let me see. Scale it out. 
scale that on the Y. No, that's not it. Rotate that back. Scale it on the X. Okay, let's go something about there. I think that's... Ugh, still not great. Scale it up just a bit. Okay, that's not bad. Right there. <clears throat> so this is the kind of wood texture that you're going to have. Uh, I've created a normal map for it and set the... This is my normal map. Make sure that you set that to non-color data. I put the strength at 0.3. Now I've been using this texture for a lot of other things and those tutorials will be coming probably soon. Um, I'll go more in depth of how I did this. But basically it's the exact same thing as our metal. We just have the diffuse, our regular image texture, a glossy. Um, this is our specularity map to a color ramp and it's all connected. The only thing different is we didn't do a grunge and we don't have, or we have a uh, normal map in here now, which is this one here. And like I said, if you don't have the texture, just go to cgtextures.com and uh, if you don't have the maps for it, make sure you download Crazy Bump. Uh, there's a free trial that you can use for Crazy Bump for a while. I would highly recommend just purchasing it. It's a very, very nice program if you're going to be doing 3D editing, CG stuff. Um, this is a hue saturation value node. All I've done is uh, I found this to be a little bit orange. So I just turned down the saturation a bit to make it a little bit lighter. And I think with that, our bucket should be done. Uh huh. Let me give it a double check over here. Mm hmm. Um, let me, I want to do one more thing, just a little touch up, I'm just going to scale this bottom part in just a little bit more. Alright, so now if I go to my camera, I'm just going to select a lot camera to view so I can get a nice close up shot of it. Right about there. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a render. What's my render setting at? samples let's do uh, 50 samples and I'll go ahead and render that let's see what this turns out as <coughs> I'm using CPU to render this so bear with me guys I'm a little slow my renders are a little slower than normal okay alrighty That is not bad. That is not looking too bad. Uh, let me go into my bucket. Let me see if I can add a subdivision surface to that. It's looking a little blocky to me. Okay, that didn't ruin anything on me. So now that I've added the subsurf, let me see if I can make the bucket just a little bit thicker. And for the glossy shader, I wanted to mess with that as well. Let me go back to my compositor. I want this to be a little bit more glossy. Is that too much? Is that not enough? Is that good? All right, we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and give this another render here. You usually always have to do this at the end of the project. You just got to render it a couple times and mess with the things that need messed with smooth everything out a little bit you know all right that is looking pretty good all right so I think that our bucket is pretty much finished yeah, let me let it finish rendering here Dun, 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 dun. Come on. Come on, render out. Come on, render out. 
Alright, here we go. So, that looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, there's a couple more things that you could do if you wanted to. You could add a, a very, very slight displacement to the bucket to make it look like it was, uh, it's was. it been used a lot, like it's beat up or uh, it's been thrown around a few times. Another thing would be to take this edge right here that is a little small and maybe just pull that out a little bit. Uh, aside from that, everything else is looking pretty good. So there you have it, guys. Uh, if you want to make a beach scene and you need a beach bucket, or if you just want an old bucket to put in a house somewhere, this could be a mop bucket or something, whatever you want to do. It's up to you guys. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thanks for watching.